Having a reference management system is one of the most important aspects of effective research workflows. An effective reference management system should facilitate navigating through the knowledge base and the rapid retrieval of key information. The following timestamps outline this video where I share my insights on how Rome Research can serve this objective. The following examples illustrate some use cases that will be achievable by the end of the video. Suppose we would like to find all papers in the database that are related to Project 2. All I have to do is to write a query that searches for instances of citations where Project 2 is mentioned. Here, the hide all tag hides the context information which I may not necessarily want to see. Another example is if I wanted to filter papers that I have read or not read. Here I use at and tilde to mark papers as read or unread respectively. So for example, I can search for papers that I have not yet read that were recommended to me by a certain individual. Now suppose that I am following the work of a research group, say research group 3. Then I can search for all papers related to that group. Notice how in addition to the found instance of citation key 3, the system is made such that you can also see related papers below, in this case citation key 4. This can help you identify the directions of the group. Now say you're writing a paper related to some application area and you'd like to see how other relevant papers have motivated this area. You can then run a query for papers with instances of this application area and their motivation. The way I have this set up shows not only how those papers were motivated but also what thoughts I've had on this matter at the time that I've read it. This way my previous thoughts can resurface and I can further build on them. Another use case is when you're trying to pick a journal to submit your work in progress paper to. With this system, you can search for journals that discuss the key terms of your work. Just run a query that searches for those instances and then develop a list of potential target journals for submitting your work. Here's one that I use very often when I'm in the inception phase of a project. I begin to investigate future directions discussed in the literature pertaining to certain topics. Here, I'm searching for such instances that have whether keywords 2 or 3 in them. You can notice that in addition to those instances, there are also results for my own thoughts on those specific directions, which I may be able to develop further into complete ideas. Furthermore, I can narrow down my search to show only instances with both keywords rather than just one or the other. Finally, this system also allows me to create a reference library that saves custom views for my personal preference, such as a list of only read or unread references. Before describing my reference system, I will cover how attributes work in ROM research. This is a miniature example where I have three attributes, name, job, and city, that are used to describe the contents of this page. In addition to functioning as regular tags and links, attributes can also be used to construct attribute tables such as this one. Now we have a list showing all pages with these attributes and their values. Unfortunately, in their current state, attributes cannot be used to filter this table given specific values. However, I expect this feature to come in the future. In the meantime, I found a future-proofed method for them to serve this purpose. This method is very simple. Just nest the attributes under one another. The sequence of nesting depends on how you want to filter the information. For example, this current layout allows me to filter jobs by cities in a query. 
by querying jobs in either Atlanta or LA, the results will show both lawyer and doctor. I could also filter any child node by its parent, for example, who are the doctors working in LA. This result will show Jack. Now if you wanted to filter a parent node by its children, you can navigate to that parent's page. Here I'm using City as an example, and I can filter its backlinks by lawyers to find Atlanta. Now I will show you how you can future-proof this system for when the feature hits. All you have to do is to iteratively navigate to the pages corresponding to the children, choose all the instances in your backlinks, and reverse indent them. Here I do this for both name and job attributes. Now you can see how the original pages reflect this change. This is the template I use for reference attributes. The nesting sequence was chosen based on the graph on the right. An arrow going from, say, the keyword node to the citation node means that I want to filter down citations by keywords using queries. And so the citation attribute needs to be a child of the keyword attribute, and so on, so forth. I remove any arrow that creates a loop because I can apply that filter via backlink filtering instead of queries when needed. So in this structure, queries are prioritized. Here's a quick example of how I populate a reference in Rome. I start by creating a page for that reference with its unique citation key from Zotero. Then I paste the citation data within one block. Then I start writing a few keywords, including a copy of the title, where I reference the keywords in the title as well. The context attribute is there for me to remember how I came across this paper. Did I research it? Or was it recommended to me by someone? Or did I find it in the citation of another paper where I wanted to learn more about a tangential idea? Projects is there for me to link this paper to relevant projects that I am currently working on. Then I connect this paper to other papers from my database. I can return to this later and form more connections when I find them. Then I add a link to the original file, whether online or from my cloud drive. Finally, the excerpts attribute is where I insert all highlights and annotations from the original paper. You can watch my previous video to know how I like to do this. The video uses RemNote, but all concepts can be used in Rome as well. With this setup, you are now able to search for the information as I demonstrated in the use cases at the start of the video. This is all I have to share. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one.